Welcome back to the WFT Declassified Podcast. We are so excited to be back. We are back in full. We have Brian back in the building live from vacation. Brian, how are we doing? I'm doing awesome. I am happy to be back, fellas. How are you guys? Tremendous. Eric is in the background. Or I should say Eric has his fresh <laughs> new background. I'm in the, I am in the background. No when I'm sir. with you two, when I'm hanging out with you two, I'm always in the background. <laughs> Third wheel like a mug. It was nice last week. I got to be the uh, second Not wheel. At all. <laughs> Play it from the Himalayas. All right. So look, everybody listening, everybody watching, we appreciate you. Subscribe, tell your friends, all that jazz. We got a lot to get to tonight. Next week is the official NFL draft. Your Washington commanders are going to get better next week. We're excited. So this week, we're going to take you through the entire first round, what the teams are going to pick and why every team in the first round, not just the commanders. We're doing this to show you how the draft is going to shape up for the team that you love. That's the commanders and what they're going to be able to walk away with. All right, fellas, are you ready? I'm Let's ready. Go. Let's go. All right. On the clock up first is the Jacksonville Jaguars, and they're going to take Aiden Hutchinson out of Michigan. Why? Because number one, he went to Michigan and my family's from there. And uh, number one, number two, he's overall the best player in the NFL draft. Um, he's an edge rusher, defensive end. I like him a lot. He's super aggressive. He's athletic. Um, maybe not elite athletically, but he knows how to get to the quarterback. If you watched any Michigan Wolverine games last year, he was all over the field. He's a game changer. A lot of people try to comp him to Nick Bosa. I don't see that. I see more Ryan Kerrigan in his game. Um, not necessarily in like um, his build and things like that, but just in terms of total impact. I'm seeing a lot of Ryan Kerrigan there, and that's not a bad thing to have if you're the Jacksonville Jaguars. Next up on the clock, the Detroit Lions. Detroit Lions select another edge rusher, but they're going Kayvon Thibodeau from Oregon. This guy is athletically gifted. He is athletically superior to all other edge rushers in this class, and he is excellent. He has speed to go around the edge. He has power to go right through the offensive tackle, uh, and his upside is all there ahead of him, in front of him. So he he hasn't even reached his potential. Uh, Detroit Lions are still a building team. This is a guy that they can put on the defense, and he'll be there wreaking havoc for the next 10 years. Kayvon Thibodeau, edge rusher, Oregon. The big question with Thibodeau is, does he love the game of football because he has a lot of other interests? Uh, there are, are pros that evaluate the game that say he hasn't reached his full potential but still had a lot of impact. Certainly an elite player. The question is, are you going to be able to get it all out of him? But I think at number two overall, Detroit should be very happy with that pick. All right, Houston's on the clock. Houston Texans with the third pick. I love that you guys both took edge rushers. Houston has needs all over the board. Uh, there's really not a position that they can't upgrade, um, but they seem to be pretty insistent that uh, their quarterback of the future is Davis Mills. So if your quarterback of the future is Davis Mills, it is in your best interest to keep him upright. upright. Uh, therefore, I'm taking uh, the best tackle in the draft. And I believe that is Charles Cross from Mississippi State. That's a great pick for him. Um, for Davis Mills, it sure is. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a beast of a tackle. Uh, really going to help them out it's, a lot. The, the top three are really close, too. The, yeah. the top three tackles are, are all like 1A, 1B, 1C. You can't really miss with any of them, I don't think. Uh, I was really close to taking Evan Neal here, but I think Cross just has a slight advantage. It's a great draft to need a tackle, I'll tell you what. Um, all right, on the clock now, the New York Jets, they're going Garrett Wilson. They're going playmaker, okay? Mm, early. They're, they took Zach Wilson last year, right? And uh, he had an up-and-down year. He had some good moments. Um, I think he struggled a little bit or maybe a lot as well. But they're going to get him a receiver. And by most accounts, Garrett Wilson is the best wide receiver in this draft. He can do the most he's dynamic he's electric he's all those things um they go garrett wilson at number four with the jets garrett wilson that sucks because that's a guy i wanted uh, the commanders to get but yes you are right he is excellent he is probably the best receiver in the draft he's gonna go high um thinking that he'll fall to 11 is probably wishful thinking on uh, on my part but excellent receiver excellent pick that is a good draft to need a wide receiver though so for sure for sure. All right, Giants, what are we doing? 
New York Giants, uh, they need to protect Daniel Jones or whoever is going to be the quarterback a little bit better than they've been doing these last couple of years. So uh, they are selecting Ikem or Iki Aquanu, offensive tackle, NC State. Uh, he is highly athletic. He is a large man, 6'5", 330. Uh, he can play guard, so he gives you some positional flex, but he is a left tackle, no doubt. Uh, the left tackle they have there now has had some struggles. Maybe he's better suited for right tackle, but this is a guy you can put in there. He'll be there to protect the blind side for the quarterback, if it's Daniel Jones, if it's whoever, uh, for the next 10-plus uh, years. Uh, Iki Aquanu, uh, offensive tackle, NC State. No complaints there. Outstanding. That'd be a great pick for the Giants there. Uh, like Eric said, the, the difference between him and Charles Cross is pretty minimal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you can win with both of those guys for sure, for sure. Carolina, what, what are they doing? Number six, Carolina Panthers. I hate, 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 hate this pick. Uh, I would never do it in a million years, but they're going to because uh, they're the Carolina Panthers. They're uh, the, the commander south for a reason. Uh, they're going with Kenny Pickett, uh, quarterback out of Pittsburgh. Uh, he is not as good as <laughs> Sam Darnold, but that's who they're taking. Um, I personally would take Evan Neal here. Uh, if he's the best left tackle on the board. Uh, it's not me making the pick. It's the Carolina Panthers, and they're desperate for a quarterback. So I'm going to believe that they're not going to trade for uh, for Baker Mayfield or any anybody else. Jimmy Garoppolo, I think they're going to draft, and they're going to be very disappointed with their pick, uh, the third-best quarterback in the draft class, Kenny Pickett. Yeah. A lot of pro evaluators are seriously down on Kenny Pickett. They said that um, number he's, one – He's not Joe Burrow. He's no Joe Burrow. He's not. They, they want to. Yeah, people want to put him there. He ain't Joe Burrow. Hey, they're saying that. Uh, yeah, they don't think he's better than Sam Darnold. A lot of folks are saying that. So, um, but I could totally see the Panthers doing that. You got a coach that is uh, potentially going to lose his job if he doesn't turn things around. And what do coaches do when they're going to lose their job? They get a young quarterback to say, "See, we can't win right now because we got a young guy that I'm molding to be our future." So, I could totally see that happening. Yeah, I don't think they have the patience to wait on Malik Willis. I think that's probably who they'd rather have in a perfect situation. But I, I think that uh, David Tepper's uh, growing impatient. I don't think they can wait around for uh, for, another, for a developmental quarterback. So I think Pickett's the guy as the most pro-ready quarterback. Yeah. All right. Matt Matt Barkley is my NFL comp, actually. <laughs> Just saying. Hey, not even Matt Leinart. Okay. Um, not even Matt Hasselbeck? We just ha to hey, Hasselbeck was nice, though. Yeah, exactly. I, think I he, like Hasselbeck. He was a you can make a Carson Strong comparison to Hasselbeck more so than Dickens. Mm, okay. I love me some Carson Strong, though. You know this. You guys know this by now. We know you do. All right. The Giants on the clock. They're going to go Ahmad Sauce Gardner, cornerback out of Cincinnati. Uh, a heck of a football player. I mean, this guy is just amazing. A lockdown, true shutdown corner um, in college, and will also be that in the pros, I strongly believe. This dude is six foot two, hyper athletic. He he can read uh, the offense. This guy knows exactly what the receiver is going to do before they do it, and he creates turnovers. What more can you possibly want? I think that's a heck of a pick for them. And if the Giants walk away in the first seven picks with the Mod Sauce Gardner and uh, Okawanu, they've gotten better. Let's just they be have clear. improved. Yep. Yeah. So number eight, Atlanta Falcons. Matt Ryan's gone. Uh, they signed uh, Mariota to a two-year deal. He's just a placeholder. I'm going quarterback, QB, Malik Willis. Uh, he is highly athletic. He has lots of talent. He has the potential to be a superstar in the league, but he does need some time. He's going to need time to get adjusted to an NFL offense. And with Mariota there, he can do that. He doesn't have to start day one. He doesn't have to carry the team day one. Uh, he can take his time, ease into it. Mariota is the perfect mentor. He's uh, regarded as a good teammate. Uh, he you know, if you bench Mariota, he's not going to be disgruntled. He'll be able to help uh, Malik along the way uh, until he's ready. But they need to sell tickets. They need to plan for their future. And this is a place where I think uh, Malik Willis would eventually thrive. They've got some weapons there. Uh, they'll be adding more weapons as they have more picks. Uh, but QB, Malik Willis. I like the pick. They got the right coach for it, Arthur Smith, who helped revitalize Ryan Tannehill's career. 
Uh, he's not in any danger of getting fired. So they have the longevity there in place. Mariota, I disagree about him being a good mentor because guess what? That dude's getting hurt. The second snap of the season of the game, he's out of there. Malik Willis is going to be forced yeah. onto the field. But, uh, you know, you yeah. can do a lot worse than that at pick uh, number eight. I, I think it's the right pick. I think if if Carolina does what Eric projected with Kenny Pickett, then I think Atlanta's absolutely in play for Malik Willis. He's the kind of quarterback where you don't have to have an A-plus receiving core to get positive and productive results. Because of his mobility, we saw it year one with RG3. Guys like Josh Morgan, you know, things like that can become effective if your quarterback can be on the move and create mismatches for your defense. I like the pick. Um, don't love it there, but I see what you're doing. Um, you're just, I think Ellie's right. You're going to see him way more, way sooner than you need to or than you want to uh, playing behind Mariota. But, you know, if he, he does have all of the tools to become a good quarterback, he just ain't there yet. He's going to need some time to develop. So, we shall see. But, yeah, I mean, I took Pickett at six, so I'm not going to criticize anybody else's quarterback selection. <laughs> uh, but like I said, I'm doing what I think they're going to do. So. Absolutely. Uh, number 12, we up to number 12, Seattle Seahawks. No. Number nine. Seattle. Number nine, Seattle Seahawks. That's what I meant. You guys don't <laughs> listen. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so number nine, Seattle Seahawks. They need uh, help across the board. They also need a quarterback, but I'm going to skip that because the Legion of Boom needs a breath of fresh air. And you mentioned Ryan Pick, uh, Ryan Kerrigan earlier. I'm going with Ryan Kerrigan 2.0, Mr. George Carlaftis, edge out of Purdue. Uh, he is a stout player, uh, pass rush, run run defense. I, I love him in Seattle. So that's my pick at, at number nine. Uh, I like him. He he is really a Ryan Kerrigan clone. He is a high effort, high motor. Um, a lot of his sacks come from uh, his relentless nature. He's not a speed guy. He's not going to blow by uh, an offensive tackle to uh, to make uh, to make the sack. But uh, he is high effort, high intensity, and, consistent. Uh, yeah, it, it, exactly. And I think if you can get a Ryan Kerrigan and get, I think Ryan Kerrigan has ninety five career sacks. If you can get that type of production out of Karloftis. I think that's a good uh, good pick. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, so I am back on the clock, and I am back on the clock with your New York Jets. Uh, in the first pick, I took Garrett Wilson. I think the Jets are going to be all in on offense. I'm going to come back and get another receiver for the Jets in Jamison Williams, the guy out of mm. Alabama. Listen, if you listen to NFL Serious XM Radio, this is the guy that all the former coaches and executives are raving about. Mm -hmm. They say that he can be, once he's fully recovered, one of the best receivers in the draft. Actually, maybe the best receiver in the draft when healthy, possibly in the NFL. Everybody loves this guy. The question is, is he going to recover? It, you know, you never know. Injuries happen. But this guy is elite, explosive. Uh, any, any category you can think of in terms of athleticism, this guy has it. He's elite there. He is just that kind of dude, uh, star potential out of the, out of the box. He's going to be a great player, but um, you know, the question again is health. So the Jets are going to come off with two wide receivers in the first round. I have them taking Jamison Williams at 10. I like Jamison Williams. He's really good. The only thing that scares me is the uh, ACL injury. Uh, when you're talking about guys who games are predicated on speed and you're talking about a lower body injury, yes, uh, people recover quicker from ACLs now than they did in years past, but that's still wear and tear on a body, on a player whose game is predicated on speed. So that that gives me pause, but otherwise he's a good player. It was a good pick. Don't hate it at all. He's my favorite player, my favorite receiver in this draft. I agree with whatever scouts you were talking about. I think he's, he's probably – potentially the best player out there in the draft. So, uh, yeah, I definitely would. I'm 100% on board with that pick for them, although I'd be 110% if it was Washington. Pick. <laughs> Speaking of Washington, the commanders are on the board, on the clock. With the number 11 pick, the Washington commanders select whatever wide receiver is left. Uh, they're going Drake London wide receiver USC. I think initially the commanders want to trade out of this spot. Uh, if a couple of their targets are not there, I think they really want to get more picks. But if not, I think they target a wide receiver and Drake London is a special type of player. He is a guy who is bigger 
than the receivers that we have now. He's able to use his body uh, to muscle and wrestle the ball away. He is a red zone threat, uh, but also – uh, he has speed. His 40 time isn't the best, but he is able to run away from defenders and turn um, short gains into big plays. So he's a, he would be a guy who can be a good complement to some of the speed that we do have with a Terry McLaurin, with a Curtis Samuel when healthy, and Diami Brown, who uh, hopefully takes a second to, uh, or takes a leap in his second year. So Drake London, wide receiver, USC. My goodness. Um... I wouldn't go receiver there if I were Washington, but uh, I'm not uh, pick number 11. Uh, I'm, I don't hate Drake London at all. Um, I just would, there's, I think there are bigger needs than Drake London on this offense uh, and defense. Uh, so I don't hate the pick. Uh, it's not the one I would have made, but I got no, I got nothing to get no, no hate for the pick at all. Very good player. Uh, I will be happy to welcome up board if that's the pick. Just wouldn't have been mine. Yeah, no, I do hate the pick actually. Uh, <laughs> because <laughs> F diplomacy, yeah, I'm trying to be <laughs> <laughs> because of some of the other players that are still on the board that could really help you more immediately. I know fans do not want to see this team go defense again, but sometimes it's necessary. Mm. There are other guys there that can help you. Uh, I just didn't love that pick there, but uh, if they do it, I'm on board, but. You know, for for everybody uh, talking about safety for the commanders, Marty Herney, uh, Ron Rivera, through their whole Carolina era, they never selected a safety in the first round. The only secondary guy that they selected in the first round was 2004, Chris Gamble, cornerback, Ohio State, and that was at pick 20. Every other pick in the first round was a front seven linebacker, defensive end, edge rusher, offensive tackle, or wide receiver. So. Uh, history tells us they're not te- uh, they're not taking a safety, but we'll see. They could. Are those gentlemen still employed by the Carolina Panthers? <laughs> this is <laughs> true. Carolina <laughs> Panthers North is uh, where they transferred yeah. divisions now. So. Yeah. yeah, this is. Uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, like I said, I don't hate the pick. I'm I'd be very happy with London, um, but with somebody out there like not necessarily even Kyle Hamilton, but somebody like Stingley, somebody like Devin Lloyd still out there. Uh, it's a tough one for me for, for Washington, but uh, I'd get over it just like I got over Carson Wentz. So uh, yeah, more power to you. Yeah. All right, Minnesota. All right, Minnesota. Now we're at pick number 12. Um, yeah, this isn't – he wasn't I – had, I had a couple players selected, but I had no idea this guy was still going to be here. Uh, he's not getting past this spot. And I'm going with Derek Stingley Jr., LSU cornerback. Uh, I thought he would be gone by now, which is why I did not slot him. Um, and I was going to have inter- uh, Minnesota go interior O line here, but with a player of his caliber, even though there was a little bit of a scariness with the injuries, I don't think at number twelve you pass up uh, you pass up Derek Stingley. Yeah, that, that's yeah, it, that's a bargain right there at the twelfth overall pick. Um, he had a tremendous year a couple of years ago, some slight regression last year. But um, I, I think you really, really can can do a lot with that pick uh, if you get Derek Stanley Jr. for the Vikings. They're definitely looking for secondary help. That's all I've seen mocked to them is secondary players. Yeah. So, yeah, outstanding pick there. Okay. Houston is on the clock. They got this pick from Cleveland. You guys really complicated this pick by who's still on the board. I am going to trust their needs, though. They have a huge needed wide receiver in Houston. They're going Chris Olave. I think of the of the top three or four receivers, he's the bottom of the, that list, even though I think he is very good. Um, the big concern with him is yards after catch. They're just not there. Um, but this guy is a great route technician. Um, you know, he's, he's a, a fluid athlete, explosive. All the things that you want, he just doesn't get yards after catch. Um, but he can help Houston out a lot, especially if they're committed to uh, Davis Mills the third. So I, I think that's going to be a good pick for them. And I'm going to be honest with you. I would double down on tackle here because Evan Neal, Neal's still on the board. I might just figure out which one's the better and move the other one to the right side. That would be an amazing set of bookend tackles. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Charles Cross and Evan Neal <laughs> in the same draft. That would be unreal. Not um, bad at all. Yeah. I mean, Davis Mills, you didn't no matter who you'd have at wide receiver because he'd have all day to throw. <laughs> he can walk a <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know how happy they would be about being on the same team, but yeah. Right. Olave would be a great pick there, but uh, if if the board fell this way, um, Houston did lose their safety via free agency, so I could see like Hamilton or somebody um, 
getting taken by them uh, if, if the board falls that way and he's still there at that pick. Um, so because that's a big need for them as well, too. I could see that. I could see. I just when you're building young teams and you have your quarterback in place, I think you put offense around him to see what you really have on that guy before you start building up the defense. That that would be mine. A lot of it could be their new what Kenny Stills. Yeah. Just roast everybody down the sideline. Don't worry about yards after catch because he's so open. <laughs> just get in there. Exactly. Yeah. Just run past everybody. Yeah. Don't hate it. No, I mean, like I said, no. you can't make a bad pick for the Texans this year. Honestly, <laughs> they so need true. everything. Yeah, they need everything. Yeah. All right, Baltimore. Number 14, Baltimore Ravens select cornerback Trent McDuffie from the University of Washington. Uh, McDuffie is technically pro Fisher, technically sound, almost perfect when it comes to that. He's not a superior athlete. He's six foot, 190 pounds, maybe 195 pounds, uh, but he doesn't panic. Uh, he is able to recognize routes immediately. He can mirror uh, just about any receiver that's put in front of them. Uh, and like I said, he's a technician. He's somebody who's going to work. He works at his craft, watches a lot of film tape. Uh, so uh, I think this is a player whose mentality would fit right in with the uh, the Baltimore Ravens where they are serious about their defense and they, uh, they, they've they had some good corners there in uh, years past, and I think that he will just add to that and be another good corner uh, for them for years to come. Yeah, I think he's like the most underrated of the top corners in the draft. Yeah. He's, he's legit. Yeah, and he's underrated because he, he doesn't necessarily have some of the physical gifts that some of the other guys have, but uh, I think he's just uh, he's just really good all uh, all the way around. Yep. No like complaints it. there. All right, number 15 pick, Philadelphia. The Philadelphia Eagles, huh? Um, again, way more people on the board than I thought would be here, so this kind of blows up my draft. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and roll with uh, Kyle Hamilton here. Uh, it's just a it's just a slight edge over who I was going to pick because I think who I was going to pick is going to be there when they come back around at 18. So I'm going to roll with best player available at this point, um, which is uh, I don't know how big of a – I know their secondary is not the best, but I don't know what the specifically safety, but I think Kyle Hamilton improves whatever's there. So Kyle Hamilton's my pick. Philadelphia Eagles at 15. I like it. And if they get that guy at 15, yeah, look out. That That's a great spot for him to go. The only place I liked him more – um, was Washington and, and Baltimore. I thought in Baltimore, man, he would really help them out in some ways. But Philadelphia is a tremendous landing spot for Kyle Hamilton. So uh, let's hope that doesn't happen in real life. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, I'm not I'm – not, Although I think he's yeah. Roy Williams 2.0, according to Brian, so maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, a, I'm, not uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Kyle Hamilton. I think he will be a good, uh, strong safety. Strong safety. Listen to this guy. All right. I kind <laughs> right, of so agree you, with that. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, my eyes, my eyes tell me differently than what I read. Put it that way. No, he, he, he's I legit. see him just a little, I don't see him that well in space, but uh, you know, I haven't watched enough of him to really tell, but what I've seen, I have not seen him like really navigate deep outs, break on the ball, that kind of stuff, flip his hips and get, you know, if he gets faked out, I haven't really seen enough of that. I just, I don't trust it yet, but that's why I sent him to Philly. I think I think you guys are going to be uh, eating crow on that guy. I think he's a baller. All right. Taylor New Orleans Mason. at number 16. They're going to take Evan Neal. Yeah. Uh, the tackle for New Orleans. So rumor is or rumor has it that Philadelphia traded with uh, or excuse me, New Orleans traded with Philadelphia to get the extra pick to ensure that they got one of these top offensive linemen. I think it's going to be Evan Neal. He's still on the board. I don't expect him to still be on the board at this no. point in the draft. But if he's there. They are going to trip over themselves, running to the podium to turn in their card that says we have selected Evan Neal, a super strong, super aggressive tackle. He's really going to help that team out. New Orleans loves their offensive linemen. They love their tackles to be dominant football players. Evan Neal is the next in line there. He's the heir to the throne of the offensive line. New Orleans is taking Evan Neal. Yeah, I like him way too much to have him available at 16. I just didn't see a good spot when I was picking for him elsewhere. Alabama tackles are always a, a good bet to take. They're always sound football players, pass, run game. Uh, they're smart. They know what to do. Uh, so uh, that he'll be ready to compete day one. That's a good pick. With that, number 17, the Los Angeles Chargers 
select the very first uh, Georgia player off the board, defensive tackle Jordan Davis. I think they have a need on the interior of their defensive line, and him next to Bosa I think would be a lethal combination. Jordan Davis is uh, the size of a continent. He is huge, and he can run. Uh, I posted a clip on Twitter today of him running down a quarterback sprinting full speed and it was kind of ridiculous how big he was how small the quarterback was and how much ground he can cover um he he is just a physical freak and i think he is going to cause a lot of problems for offenses who try to run uh towards him and uh he's really going to be able to dictate what uh, uh what offenses can or cannot do uh when he gets to the nfl so jordan davis defensive tackle to the chargers at 17. yeah i like that pick it's not necessarily a need but all the tackles are off the board um, and really the top corners are out of there too. Uh, and Jordan Davis. Yeah. He could really, he could really wreak havoc. And you know what else I like to see? Not that I like to see this personally, but what I expect to see is, is actually happening. And that's Trayvon Walker sl- slipping down the board um, because Trayvon Walker, what people are talking about him now is like number one pick because he showed up at the combine and had a monster combine, but production on the field really doesn't match that. So hopefully, yeah. you know, front offices are wiser than, Draft pundits, good because I kind of do see Trayvon Walker kind of dropping down there as high as he's, he's been ranked recently. Weeks, so I'm yep. cool with the Jordan Davis pick for sure uh, for the Chargers. That's a good that's a good value pick, best player available really. Like it, I like Let's, it. We're gonna go number pick 18, Philadelphia. And my gamble paid off. My guy is still here, and this one breaks my heart because I would love to see this guy in a commander uniform. I'm gonna go Devin Lloyd, linebacker, Utah, best line, mm-hmm. best inside linebacker in the draft. Really would look good uh, in the burgundy and gold and white and mauve or whatever colors we're rocking this year. Um, but alas, I think Philadelphia grabs him. Um, and it really screws up my plans to have them draft a crappy wide receiver. They got a really good linebacker with their second first round pick. Um, so, yeah, uh, unfortunately, Devin Lloyd is going to be uh, tormenting uh, the commanders for the foreseeable future. Yeah, man, if the Eagles have the draft, we're projecting them to have. Then they know, right? the to the East. <laughs> that, that's a good pick. You know who loves uh, uh, Lloyd is our guy. Uh, man, his his handle is uh, slipping my mind right now, but it's uh, I think it's a guy DC with a bunch of numbers. I can't. Yeah, he posts it every time we do a mock. He's, he's yes. all over. Yeah, yes. he's kind of yes. actually talked me into Devin Lloyd. I would be yeah. ecstatic if Devin Lloyd show, uh, ends up at the Commanders, but um, yeah. Brian took a wide receiver. So I like Devin awesome. Lloyd. Um, yeah, I, I think it would be tough for the commanders to take him, but I, I agree. I, I like him a lot. I think you, you're right. He is the best inside linebacker um, in the draft. And uh, that'd be a big pickup for the Eagles. Uh, it would suck for us. Yes, it would. Yeah. Um, all right. So that brings me back to the Saints on the clock. Uh, and they're going to go, and by the way, it's DC1958 on Twitter, D, full Twitter handles DC19583. He yep. is the Devin Lloyd enthusiast. Yeah. Captain of the fan I, club. I think he's I think he's right, though. I like Devin yeah. Lloyd a lot. He has talked us into it, so shout out to, to our guy. All right. Somehow, I ended up with both Saints picks. How did that work? Anyway. Yeah, I got both Eagles picks. We're the <laughs> GMs. They, they're going to they're gonna turn this draft on its ear right here. Um, the other thing that New Orleans needs, because they're going to build around Jameis Winston. That's what NFL on Sirius XM told me this week. And I think to help him out, they're going to get George Pickens out of Georgia. Woo! Wide Ooh. receiver. Yes. Reachy, reach a lot. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Reachy, reach a lot. Yes. <laughs> Listen, the guy is, is hyper athletic. Um, he gets some yards after the catch. He has good ball skills. I mean, outstanding ball skills. Jameis, you know who throw him high. You know who throw him far. You need a guy and go get him. Yes, they have Michael Thomas, but do we really know what he still is at this point? Um, this guy compliments uh, our guy, uh, Kamara, very well. He blocks in the run game. He's competitive. Um, you know, he's not the toughest dude in the world, but he, I think, fits that offense extremely well with a quarterback like Jameis Winston, yeah. George Pickens. Is he Josh Doxson? That's what I want to know. No, he's is George he, Pickens. <laughs> is, he Mike, is he Mike Evans or is he Josh Doxson? Because – the thing that scares me is when a guy is really good at one thing yeah. and you draft him based on that, because that one thing gets a lot harder when you get to the NFL. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've seen his highlights. He's made some ridiculous catches. So yeah. don't hate it. It's a little surprising that early. Um, Sky Moore's still out there, but 
Uh, you do you, George Pickens, pick nineteen. Won't yeah, be the I, first time. And if he if he pans out, who cares where he was picked? Yep. Yeah, he, I think he's a good player. My only issue with him, he hasn't played a lot of football for whatever reason, whether injury or what have you. He's missed a lot of time in college. And, you know, I, I can see those type of nagging injuries lingering over into the pros and him missing a lot of time. Uh, but, you know, from when he does play, it's awesome. He just doesn't play that much. He's missed a lot of games. So um, I do like him. Maybe not that high, but uh, he's a good player. I think you guys will be surprised. He's going to ball out. Steelers, where are we going? At number 20, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they need the next great Steeler quarterback. They only have, unfortunately, uh, Mason Rudolph right now. So I'm going quarterback Desmond Ritter. He can sit behind, uh, what is it? Um, uh, who, did, who did they sign in free agency? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Trubisky. Trubisky. So uh, two-year deal. Trubisky, is he an answer? Can he revive his career? Maybe. But you can't necessarily bet on Trubisky and him kind of figuring it out or the light bulb turning on for him. You need to plan for the future. And the uh, the Steelers do just that, and they've always done that. And they've always planned really well, and they've done really well when they select a quarterback. And I think they go – quarterback Desmond Ritter he is tall he's got a strong arm uh he's played a lot of football so he's seen a lot of different uh defenses coverages and I think he'll mesh well with uh, a city going from Cincinnati to uh Pittsburgh I think that's a, a good match where he can learn and um you know kind of understand the NFL game uh behind Trubisky interesting yeah that's if he if they don't I can see him going anywhere from like pick 20 and pick 90 yeah. like it's just hard because he you know the struggles that he had when he faced top competition uh the accuracy potential issues um I don't I you know that's a that's a tough pill to swallow in round one for me for somebody who's I mean Malik Willis is a project but he is a really strong project whereas Desmond Ritter has played a lot of football and he's still a project, so that that scares me a little bit. Um, but yeah, like you said, he can sit and learn. He doesn't have to play right away. Uh, that may help him. That did not help uh, Mason Rudolph in Pittsburgh, but whatever. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, yeah. I mean, you know, I don't know. I think I don't think it's the worst situation for him. I just I don't know how much better he's going to get in the NFL. That's my main concern about Ritter. I yeah. actually like this pick. I think this is the only right pick for the Steelers, to be honest with you. He <laughs> kind of comes in that mode of Big Ben, you know, yeah. uh, that kind of guy. Physically yeah. tough, uh, strong arm. See, Big Ben wasn't the most fundamentally sound quarterback that ever lived in this world, right? But he sort of fit the profile, not just of the football team, but of the town. I think Ritter's in that same mold. I think they can work with him. I think Ritter can go anywhere from 10 to, to 25. But I don't think you he's going to really last. think he's a first round pick. I think he is one. I just don't yeah. see it, man. Yeah. He's no Carson Strong. I tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not high on him, but there are yeah. a lot of draft people who seem to think he is the top quarterback yeah. in the draft. And I've seen that in multiple places. And uh, again, I, I'm not that high on him, but, you know, from seeing everything and reading everything, uh, it seems like he's starting to rise up some, uh, some teams board in terms of, uh, kind of how they see him transitioning to the NFL. So um, a QB needy team, I think that uh, that would be a good spot for him to go. Okay. Yeah. All right. Won't hate uh, it, but man, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> uh, we are, yeah, New England Patriots pick 21. This is the landing spot that uh, Trayvon Walker is dreaming of um, because mm -hmm. this is the, that Trayvon Walker is my pick here. I think the Patriots are the team that can – coax that um, ability out of what we, the athletic ability is there, but the production isn't. If, you're, if anybody's going to get the production out of him, uh, I think that the uh, Belichick led defense uh, is the way to go. This is a good Belichick pick. It's a little bit of a gamble because you just don't know how good he's going to be with it, with the lack of production, but the sky's the limit as far as talent goes. Um, so I think they're the team that can get the most of him. I think they're elated if he's here at pick 21. So Trayvon Walker from uh, Georgia, the edge is my pick for the new England Patriots. Just like I said, Desmond and Ritter was like the only right pick for the Steelers. This is the only right pick for the Patriots. You nailed it. This is a Patriots kind of guy on defense, right? It, you know, a guy that you, you, some people have an issue with. You know, a lot of people are going to stay away from. The Patriots bring him in and he becomes an all-pro. This, this is what the Patriots do. 
Uh, they got the right coaching staff in place. So, yeah, A-plus on this one. Yeah. The the Patriots are so selective in who they pick. Like, they don't – they don't look at players like how other NFL teams uh, look at players. So a lot of times you see the draft and you're, you're thinking it's going to be household name a, that they pick and they pick some guy that no one's ever heard of who transferred from some university in Germany. And um, you know, then he's a star with the Patriots. So um, I, I think Trayvon Walker with his uh, versatility, whether he can line up inside, he can line up outside along the defensive line. I think Belichick uh, will have a field day with him, and he'll probably have him stand up as well too and uh, play outside linebacker and move him all around. So he, uh, uh, I, I could see him being almost like an Adelius Thomas for, for like the Ravens, how uh, they used to move him around, and he was a big, big dude yeah. uh, as well. So good pick. Yep, I like it. That puts, I believe, Green Bay Packers on the clock at 22. They gave away all their wide receivers this offseason. <laughs> They're going Traylon Burks That's uh, as their wide receiver out of Arkansas. We know his agent. What's up? Um, we Look, guy's going to be a good NFL player. I think there are some questions about his game. I'm going to whisper that since we did talk to his agent. But um, I think this is a good pick for him and Aaron Rodgers. Big physical guy. Uh, can make plays with the ball in his hands. I think he he fills a big, big need for them at wide receiver. I like it. I like it a lot. Traylon Burks is, I mean, I think he's a uh, a little bit bigger uh, Debo Samuel. He's a guy who can uh, be moved all across the formation. You can actually throw him in the backfield for a couple of carries. Not uh, uh, not that he's a running back or anything like that for some, you know, reverses, some trick plays, those types of things. But I think he is dynamic, and I think he can do lots of different things. And uh, he's one of those guys you can throw him a uh, screen pass, and he can take it 40 yards and, uh, and turn it into a big play. So I like like that pick a lot. I like the pick a lot too, but there's no way it's happening. Green Bay is not going to pick a wide receiver in the first round. They're just not going to do it. Yeah. They just don't. It's not their MO. They don't do it. They're going to pick a defensive lineman or an edge or somebody. They might grab like the Kobe Dean. I just, I, I, this is the perfect pick. Like you're like what you said the last couple of times is like, if there was a, you know, there's the only right pick for them. I just don't have confidence. They're going to do it. They just have no interest in, in getting Aaron Rodgers help. Uh, so I love it. I don't think it's going to happen. All right. well, I don't it's hard to argue with that with their draft philosophy, but yeah. at some point they have to do it. So all right, Cardinals. Number, number 23, the Arizona Cardinals select edge rusher David Ojabo, the from the University of Michigan. The Cardinals just lost longtime edge rusher Chandler Jones. Um uh, and they need someone to replace him. And David Ojabo is that guy. He is very raw, though. Uh, he ha he doesn't have that much production, so there will be uh, a little bit of development. But he has all the tools to be a premier uh, edge rusher. You don't know. Uh, I don't know what JJ Watt's contract situation is there. If he's there for another year or if he's done. Um, but if he is and Chandler's gone, you need someone to rush the passer uh, and help that defense. So David Ojabo, edge rusher, Michigan. That's a tough sell, man. I mean, right. PFT, he's like number fifty on the PFF board. Do they? Do the Cardinals? Have, do they have other picks? Like, I mean, I can see them reaching. But just they're they're bypassing a lot of edges. Oh yeah, David Ojabo. you know, I, I think there's certainly some better ones uh, that are out there. I think, you know, he, his profile physically is similar to Chandler Jones. So my thinking yeah. was that hey, you've got a player who just left you. He can actually come in and try, he could try to fill it. I, I'm, I'm not saying that he would uh, give you what Chandler Jones uh, gave you because Chandler Jones is awesome, but yeah. I think, um, stylistically he would be similar to what they want to do. Okay. Injury, injury, injury. Torn Achilles at his pro day. Uh, so you're, you're taking some risk there too, especially as an in position. Uh, a little dicey, but he's out of Michigan, so I support it. Um, <laughs> David Ojabo, I'm, I'm riding with that pick. I'll take it. Okay. Dallas, what are we doing? Oh, I hate this pick more than I hate Kenny Pickett to Carolina, and I for different reasons. This is a really good pick, and I hate the fact that it's going to the Cowboys. Uh, Tyler Linderbaum, center from Iowa, best center in the draft. Uh, these guys, they need offensive line help. Um, Tyler Linderbaum is offensive line help. He can stabilize that. Uh, he can stabilize that line in the center. I don't know what their center situation is. I know their whole their whole offensive line has been up and down. Uh, I'm fairly certain Linderbaum can can play guard if he needs to. Um, but I think he's too good to pass up. The Dallas Cowboys they love taking offensive linemen in the first round, and he is. 
uh, the best offensive lineman left, and he's clearly the best center in the draft. So Tyler Linderbaum, center from Iowa, going to the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the pick. It makes – I mean, I hate the Cowboys, but, you know, they they built their offensive line. or they, When they were good, they always had good offensive lines, and I think this is another one to plug into that tradition. So uh, solid pick right there. I hate it, though. Or, yeah. That, that legit uh, makes them better, and that makes me sad. Absolutely. All right, Buffalo, number 25, uh, Brees Hall, running back. So Ooh. Buffalo's been battling with a mid-tier running game to uh, lower mid-tier running game forever. They want to take some of that pressure in the run game off their quarterback, Josh Allen. They get the best running back in this draft to plug in right next to Josh Allen in that backfield, and he's going to work wonders there in Buffalo. I don't got to say a lot because this is the perfect pick, and I know y'all agree. <laughs> is it, though? <laughs> Devontae Wyatt sitting out there. Um, yeah, they, they need a uh, top tier running back. That that this I is mean, all right. I know you love your running backs. Yes, I think he's there in round two if they want him. Though, honestly, no, he's not. He, I think he's he, off. Brees Hall. Yeah, I don't think unless Washington takes him. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'd, okay, that's fine. I'm not going to argue with you on that take. I, I wouldn't pick that. I would. I think they need defensive line help, and I think Devontae Wyatt helps them a lot there, but that's just me. Who am I? Yeah, well, when your pick, so there. No. <laughs> no, no, got me there. Burn. <laughs> All right, Tennessee. Where are we going with Tennessee's pick? The number 26 pick, the Tennessee Titans select offensive tackle Trevor Penning. Uh, they need some offensive line help. Their game, the offense, or the Tennessee Titans, their whole identity is built around running the football with Derrick Henry. How do you do that? You, you make sure you have some good offensive uh, linemen, and Trevor Penning is one of those guys. Um, if anybody saw him at the Senior Bowl, he was throwing guys on the ground. He was pushing people even after uh, the whistle, so he's got an attitude. He's a little bit nasty when it comes to offensive line play, which is what you want from your offensive lineman, he can step in and start day one, and that running game will continue to prosper like it has been for several years now with uh, Derrick Henry. So uh, offensive tackle, Trevor Penny. Um, I think it's an okay pick. I, at some point, the Tennessee Titans have to start planning for a contingency plan for Derrick Henry, right? Because NFL running backs only have so many miles that they can get at some point that – just completely falls apart. Have we gotten there with Derrick Henry? I don't know, but he has had an enormous amount of carries in yeah. the NFL, kind of like Josh, or what's the guy's name? Jamal Lewis with the Ravens, right? Yeah. And at some point, you just fall off a cliff when you're that kind of running back with that type of physical punishment because he, he gets it two ways. He takes punishment and he gives punishment on every single carry he gets. I would like to see them evolve. They had a pretty strong defense, but they did have some holes in the defense that I think they could be better at. But uh, Trevor Penning is an interesting offensive lineman. He's good, but there's a reason he's going to be available in the 20s, I believe. So, Yeah, I don't know. Um, we have Taylor Lewin. He's still pretty good, isn't he? Is he the left tackle now? I don't uh, know. I'll like, check. I don't know. I think, you know, maybe interior O-line. I don't hate the pick. I mean, you're not, I'm not going to complain about taking a left tackle or right tackle, honestly. Uh, yeah. At this point in the draft, you're getting to the best player available. Um, so, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, and he would probably start out at right tackle. I, I, I think Lewin's probably got another year or two left on his contract, whether they bring him back or not. And then he can eventually slide to your left tackle. But, uh, yeah. yeah. No, bro, I didn't do enough research on the Titans, honestly. This wasn't my pick, so I really don't know. So <laughs> I'll just – I'll take your word for it. How about that? All right. All right. Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the clock, pick 27. This is where the draft gets flipped on its head uh, because um, we were joking earlier, but I, I'm legit going this way. I'm going Sam Howell, quarterback, North Carolina. Uh, I think that, you know, Brady's fake retirement um, was basically setting up his real, real retirement. Uh, they need to get somebody for the future. Um, Sam Howell can step in and play and run an offense, especially an offense as high-powered as the Buccaneers. Uh, right now. Um, so if Tom Brady were to go down, you could trust a guy like Howell. Um, I don't love him going this high. Um, and I would not be surprised if he's not the pick here. I think Devontae Wyatt's another great fit at defensive line for them. 
But um, I think with quarterbacks, you make the move if he's your guy. So I'm going to pretend like I, I'm in Todd Bowles' head, and he's Todd Bowles' guy moving forward. So Sam Howell uh, at 27 to the Bucks, quarterback of the future. Let me, let me get this straight. You spent 25 picks talking about Carson Strong. <laughs> and then you get a chance to take a quarterback, and you go Sam Howell to the Bucks. That's because I've been focused on fourth-round quarterbacks all offseason. I'm not looking at high picks for quarterbacks. <laughs> I think Sam Howell is better than Carson Strong. I do. I'm not yeah. sure Desmond Ritter is better than Carson Strong. I think Sam Howell is better than Carson Strong. Sam um, Howell's going to be available in the fourth round. That, that's might the be. way it's He might be. Yeah. Um, you know, with quarterbacks, coaches lose their minds. Uh, yeah. I think Sam – I think Howell's probably second rounder, maybe third. I don't know if he's a fourth, but uh, I got him going here at 27 because I wanted to do something interesting for my second to last pick. Yeah. <laughs> I, like I think I accomplished it. I like Sam Howell. I think uh, if he can go into a situation where he doesn't have to start right away and the, I mean, this would be perfect. Learn from the best um, and sit and watch greatness. Uh, I think that would be great for him. I do think he can play. Um, and, it, and it's weird, right? This whole, you know, these last couple of weeks, it has been almost like a um, like people purposely coming out and say, well, Sam Howell's at the bottom. Sam Howell's going to be this. So yeah. Uh, in, in, Subterfuge. Yeah, so right, it's lying season, so that uh, that just gives me a little bit of pause. I think Eric may be right that uh, he may sneak up into the bottom of that first round. And we saw in college what he did when he was surrounded with elite talent. Like he yeah. was the top quarterback coming into this year because he had all the talent the year before at Carolina. I mean, the Bucks have elite talent on offense, so he can drive that. Shout um, out to uh, Coach Phil Longo for uh, coming to talk to us about Sam too. Yep. I actually think that the tight the uh, Buccaneers are going to go tight end with this pick. Uh, they have seventeen tight ends on their roster. <laughs> yeah. And are any of them good? <laughs> yes, they have no. Cameron Brait. They have yeah, OJ Jeff, Howard. They have Jeff will come back eventually. Gronkowski. Yeah, if he comes yeah. back, he'll come. I don't back. know, man. No, man. They have cornered the market on good tight ends down at ten. <laughs> I don't like it. I think they might go tight end, but no, OJ Howard's with Buffalo now. By the way, they lost. Oh, him, is he? So. Finally, somebody let he left Buffalo. Finally, somebody yeah. took him. Okay, and he's gonna let them down too. Uh, all right, Green Bay is back on the clock. I'm going Jahan Dotson, wide receiver. Uh, look, they got so they never take any, and this year they're gonna. You got to take it too. Okay. <laughs> this guy is is a uh, fluid player, really explosive wide receiver. He's only five eleven. Um, he's about a buck eighty three. Um, you, you know, Penn State is wide receiver. You right? They produce some of the best in the game. Um, I think he's going to be a very, very good wide receiver. He kind of reminds me of, um, and again, not not directly in terms of uh, play style, but just in sort of fluidity um, and potentially production. Randall Cobb sort of in that mold. Um, I think he's going to be a really strong player. I think he's going to gel well with Aaron Rodgers, really smart kid. Um, he's going to be great for Green Bay. So I got Green Bay taking Jahan Dodson at 28. Okay. That's pretty high for him, but okay. Yeah, I think I thought uh, he may go in the uh, the second round, but uh, good, solid receiver. Bad last name, but uh, good, solid receiver. <laughs> he is uh, the 25th best player on uh, Daniel Jeremiah's uh, top 50 big board. So I think right around there makes a lot of sense for him. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. I'll uh, take Daniel yeah. Jeremiah's word over mine. <laughs> <laughs> Kansas With City. The- with the 29th pick, the Kansas City Chiefs select weapon wide receiver Sky Moore. Uh, Tyreek Hill just left them. This guy is of similar stature. He doesn't have the same speed, but he is an explosive player. 5'9", 5'10", 190 pounds, explosive. Uh, and he's also he, – he's got a mean streak to him, which is uh, different when you're talking about a wide receiver, almost very similar to Steve Smith. He will fight you for the football, and when he catches it, he will run through you, even for a little guy um, and wide receiver. That is unusual. But uh, he can do so many different things. He can line up in the slot. He can line up outside. He can also he has some returnability to him as well. Um, I think Andy Reid would love to get him into this offense uh, along with Eric Bieniemy, and those guys can just scheme up all kinds of plays. And with um, Mahomes' strong arm, I, I can see 60, 70 yard touchdown passes going his way very quickly. Sky Moore, wide receiver. Yeah. Um, be honest, if you didn't take him there, I was going to take him with Kansas City at, at 30. 
It's exactly what, exactly the reasons that I was going to list. Yeah. He's, the, he's the right pick for them if he's there. That's a good pick. That's who uh, at least should have picked a 28. But, uh, <laughs> I, I'm not the biggest <laughs> Sky Moore fan. Uh, you know, he struggled against good competition, at least in some of the games. He struggled against Michigan, you know, teams like that. Um, could he be something? Sure. His NFL comp is Sterling Shepard from the Giants, which when Sterling Shepard's been healthy, he's been good, but he's a small receiver, and small receivers tend to get hurt playing the NFL, especially when they're targeted a lot. He's not built like Tyreek Hill. One thing that people don't give Tyreek Hill credit enough um, is his build. He is a solid dude, which you know helps him stay on the field. Um, he was also a track guy. He doesn't have that kind of speed. He's fast. He's a 4-4 guy, but he's not Tyreek Hill, 4-2-8, 4-2-9 fast. Um, so I don't think you're going to see equivalent results. I think that matters in this league at five, nine. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it, it's an okay pick. I, I don't trust sky Moore. I'm just not on that bandwagon and I can accept that. So much like Trayvon Walker in Philly, I think sky Moore with an Andy Reid offense is the right play. I think Andy Reid can get the most out of him. He's very good at moving guys around, getting guys open off the break. So he doesn't have to fight to get off the line. Uh, I, I think he's a good pick for an Andy Reid offense. Okay. Speaking of Andy Reid, number 30. <laughs> number 30, finally. Um, yeah, I'm going with the best player left on the board. Uh, also a position of need for the Kansas City Chiefs defensive line. We're going Devontae Wyatt out of Georgia. Uh, he should have been picked a long time ago, but he wasn't. Um, and North Carolina is very happy. Big old guy, 6'3", 300 pounds, very explosive. Um, fantastic football player. And if he's there at 30, at a position that Kansas City is in desperate need for into your defensive line. I think you roll with him. Yep. Devontae Wyatt, Georgia, defensive line, going to the going to the Chiefs. That, that's another A plus pick if they get that at 30. I don't think it'll happen that way, yeah. but I think uh, definitely a solid pick. All right. Uh Cincinnati. So I had written in pen Tyler Lindenbaum. And then you took him earlier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to go – one of the other big areas of need is secondary. I'm going to go Kyler Gordon. Uh, he's a DB out of Washington. He's a redshirt junior, a smooth athlete, athlete aggressive physical coverage. Um, you know, he can use some work on his hands and press coverage, but uh, he's very fluid. Uh, he has good instincts, and I think he's going to be a good player. They need help in their secondary, and I think he's a guy to do it for him. I like it. That's all I got. <laughs> yeah, Detroit. I think there were some other defensive backs on the board that I might have taken over him, but um, at this point, you're the man. Andrew Booth's still out there. Kyra Lam's still out there. I, know, I love Andrew Booth. Uh, yep. 32, Lions. The Detroit Lions select. This player has fallen all the way down the draft board. He was widely considered uh, you know, the best at his position all year. Linebacker. Nicobe Dean, University of Georgia. He is a tough player. He's an undersized player, uh, but no, undoubtedly he is smart. He flies to the football, and he will bring others along with him in terms of holding them accountable. He is a leader, uh, and I think uh, he will do well in helping to turn around uh, the Detroit Lions, and that's where he goes. I could see that. I also could see him being – in the second round. I'm not sure he go. He, there's, there's uh, the, the Chad guy. Um, Muma. Muma. Chad Muma. He's coming right here. <laughs> He's coming here. Okay. So you're wishing that to happen. So yeah. uh, that, that's yeah, a good but, pick for Detroit. Good attitude. Yeah. I'll take it. 30 second pick might as well be second round. So yeah. uh, you uh, I'm fine play. with Nicobe Dean. I think he's a good player. Dan Campbell type player, hard nosed, tough guy. Nothing wrong with nothing wrong with Nicobe Dean at 32. I mean, it's a it's a big fall for him. He was widely talked about as the number one linebacker in the country all year, and then draft process starts, and he he's out of the conversation almost. Yeah, I think size is, is a big deal there. I'm going to recap what our picks were in the first round. Um, Jacksonville took Aiden Hutchinson. Detroit took Kayvon Thibodeau. Houston took Charles Cross. The Jets took Garrett Wilson. The Giants took Ikem Okwonu. Carolina took Kenny Pickett. New York took Sauce Gardner. Atlanta took Malik Willis. Uh, Seattle took George Karloftis. The Jets took Jamison Williams. Commanders took Drake London. The Vikings got Derek Stingley Jr. Houston got Chris Olave. Baltimore got Trent McDuffie. The Eagles got Kyle Hamilton. The Saints got Evan Neal. 
The Chargers got Jordan Davis. The Eagles got Devin Lloyd. Saints, George Pickens. Steelers, Desmond Ritter. The Patriots, Trayvon Walker. The Packers, Traylon Burks. The Cardinals, David Ojabo. Dallas, Tyler Lindenbaum. Buffalo got Brees Hall, the running back. Tennessee got Trevor Penning, the tackle. The Bucks took Sam Howell, the quarterback. Green Bay took Jahan Dotson. Kansas City took Sky Moore. Kansas City also took Devontae Wyatt. The Bengals took Kyler Gordon. And the Lions took Nicobe Dean. Eric, um, any of those picks just don't seem to be realistic to you at all? Um, yeah, honestly, Kenny Pickett at six. <laughs> I just kind of had a hard time getting my head around. I really think that's what they're going to do. I don't think it's what they should do. Um, yeah. So that I kind of threw up in my mouth making that pick. Not a big fan of Kenny Pickett, that, especially that high. Um, but, yeah, that one stands out to me uh, since I made it. Uh, and I don't want to throw you guys under the bus. But uh, <clears throat> uh, not a big fan of, you know, all picks. But that one's the worst pick in the first round. Um, but it's not, again, not what I would do. So, like, Twitter's going to listen to that and they're going to destroy me. But still, <laughs> not what I was going to do for what it's worth. Uh, but that's what I think Cincinnati or uh, Carolina is going to do. All right. Uh, yeah, I agree. I, that that'd be weird, but I could totally see him doing it. Brian, what pick do you think is uh, most unrealistic? Um, I think I think a lot of these were uh, pretty good. Uh, I don't really have any kind of big gripes or anything uh, like that with uh, with any of these. I think the Karloftis pick was a little high. I think he probably could have gone in the twenties um, or late twenties. I think is probably where Karloftis ends up, but. Um, uh, one thing I will say for all the talk about this is a weak quarterback class. This is a weak this. These guys aren't good. We had four quarterbacks go in the first round. I mean, for a weak quarterback class, that's that's pretty solid uh, to have that many quarterbacks taken. One, it's probably just need a lot of teams just need the guy. But also, I just I think the the whole oh the quarterback class is uh, weak was a uh, was overrated. I think it was a lazy take. I think they're guys who can play. Um, are they going to be Hall of Famers? Maybe not. But I think they're solid starters that they can develop into and win games for whatever team they get picked to. But I mean, we had four of them go in the first round here. And Matt Corral didn't. He could end up being the best of all of them, honestly. Yeah, that's he's as cool. good as any quarterback in the class. He's just tiny. Okay, uh, dude, Matt Corral. Okay, man. <laughs> I don't like Corral. Eric, you're my guy, but Sam Howell to Tampa Bay, I think, is is uh, no, not gonna happen. You're about to find out though. <laughs> you will find out. <laughs> uh, no tight ends in our first round of our draft. Is that how you guys think it'll play out on draft night? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is there uh, a first round caliber tight end in the draft? I think you could talk yourself into a couple of them. Yeah. With each one. With all the guys uh, that were falling, though, man, I don't think so. I don't think we get a tight end. Yeah. Um, let me see. And if you're listening, uh, you know, hit us up on Twitter. Um, if you are watching, hit us in the comments. Tell us who we left out, what we picked that was absolutely crazy, never going to happen, where we were wrong, what picks you loved the most, you thought we got right. I'm looking through the top 50 real quick, and I don't see anybody that we really left out in the top 30. Dax Hill from Michigan, he's a safety. Yeah. Uh, he's number 19 on the big board. Um, you could potentially see him go in the top 30. He was not picked. Um, Kenyon Green, the interior offensive lineman out of Texas A&M, yeah. he was not picked. He's another good player. Uh, but outside of that, and I don't see a lot of omissions that we had. Tyler Smith did not get picked from Tulsa. Uh, Andrew Booth Jr., I think, is the one that I think is yeah. probably in there. And then Boye Mafe, uh, the edge from Minnesota. I think we left him out there as well. So, all right, fellas, we're getting real close to the draft. This has been fun. Uh, if you are listening, tell us tell us what you think. Seriously, reach out to us. We love to hear from you guys. Make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned. Uh, we got more good content coming. Fellas, it's been real. I'll check you later. <laughs>